Holy sh**, one minute and 30 seconds of logos! Combine that with all the pre, mid, and post credit scenes I smell coming, this movie is going to be 25 minutes long at best. Oh crap! Nathan Fillion isn't playing Nathan Drake in this scene. I realize this sequence is a direct homage to one of the video games, but it's so goofy and stupid. It's like the five different production companies involved said, Give us something like App 9, only even less believable. And the filmmaker said, That's not possible. And so he was fired and they hired this guy. Ah! Oh my god, I'm so sorry! That was purely reactive! Is he still playing Peter Parker? That's not how physics works. If you were inside the plane, then yes, you could jump forward because the air inside the plane is moving at the same speed you are. But outside the plane, no dice. The sheer force of wind alone would knock your ass back as soon as you leapt. Ten sins for failing at physics. Menace de ex machina. Also, why do I immediately hear the Friends theme song when these hands clasp? I'll be there for you. Stop starting your movie two-thirds of the way through your movie. Why do studios think we will happily sit through minutes of logos, but we'll walk out en masse in outrage if our eyeballs aren't immediately bombarded with mindless action in the first minute of the actual movie? First man of the whole world. That has gotta have hell of mistakes, then. You know what Magellan was really looking for? Fuck me, I don't know. The Holy Grail? Noah's Ark? A place with really righteous peaches? Gold. But... He never made it home. Therefore, obviously, he found all that gold and either hid out and died or sunk and died, but he definitely found that gold. And I'm sure of it solely because he never returned. That's enough evidence for me that the gold exists and not that he just died at sea or got scurvy or some shit. Definitely found the gold and then died at sea or got scurvy. Lost. Now gone. There's a difference. If something's lost, it can be found. I could bring up some dictionary definitions, but I think we all know this is a dumb distinction to make. Descended from Sir Francis Drake himself. What he said was what mom and dad used to say. Mom and dad also used to say they'd paid the electric bill or hired a babysitter or kicked out the hobo living in the basement. But not everything mom and dad said turned out to be true. This map is worth a fortune. And because we have dead parents, it's morally okay for us to steal it. Here goes nothing. I know they're kids, but oh boy, did they f***ed us up quickly. Says sick parvis magna. Greatness from small beginnings. What are the odds? I have the exact same thing tattooed on my... I love you, younger brother. I just can't let you escape with me right now because... Because, well, listen, I'll be honest. Just what the script says, okay? You have to stay here and suffer. Come on. I'll come back for you, Nate. Promise. Character makes a promise they have no way of knowing they can keep. Evidently, this is one of the multiverses where humans didn't evolve peripheral vision. But this isn't a multiverse movie, I hear you say. Oh, there's plenty of time for that to change, my friend. I'm offering you a real ticket out of here. A chance to see places you only read about in books. Okay, cool, but he literally just met you. Hey, Whoa. get your head out of your ass. I'm so sorry, I didn't see you. Oh, this is going to be one of those movies where the pickpocketing is straight up indistinguishable from magic. This in turn makes my level of investment indistinguishable from zero. Look, I've been dreaming about this since I was a kid. <laughs> you were a kid like three days ago. Even if you're 30 and you are not 30, this is a hilarious comment. And it disappears. Doesn't call, doesn't answer my text, nothing. Sully lies about Sam's disappearance because he thinks this will motivate Drake to join the treasure hunt with the hope of finding Sam. But why? Tell him the truth. Tell him Sam's dead and that the Moncados killed him. Wouldn't revenge motivate him even more and have the added benefit of avoiding the damn third act conflict cliche we all know is coming? You have to find somebody else. Character says they won't do a thing shortly before they decide to do the thing cliche. Easter eggs could be fun. Cheeky nods to fans. I and I have nothing against them if done tastefully. But Drake owning a sticker of the company that makes a video game where the lead character shares his name and goes on the same adventures as him is somewhat universe breaking. I'm assuming that Drake hasn't been able to send any replies to these postcards, so how did Sam find out his new address? Mapping, typing, flexing, 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 excitement. Ah, heist planning, Monta. Wait, he's still tending bar? Using three fingers to control your laptop touchpad like a counterproductive society rejecting chaos monkey. These two have spent basically no time together, so in order to speed up the relationship, let's have a teaching him how to tie a tie scene. Classic. I'm not gonna keep this thing. You're gonna shit all over my floor. Only if you don't put a litter box down somewhere, which I'm guessing you did not, so this is what we call a self-fulfilling prophecy. Oh sh I think I pushed it in too far. Something something, college girlfriend something. You guys know the drill. If he buys it before we can grab it, you kiss that gold goodbye. Or you could just steal it from him after he buys it, right? Can't believe that's any riskier than trying to steal it in the middle of this VIP-filled and therefore security-filled auction. Okay, I want to pan down from the chandelier of cigarettes to the field of purple sperm egg lamps. I know it would mean sacrificing the hilarious bubblegum band 
banter that has sustained me through the last four minutes. But how is this any less suspicious than just catching the door with your damn shoe before it locks? Which would also have the advantage of not leaving a gummy reservoir of forensic evidence leading straight back to your mouth. Holy fucking shit, this is the Camden Yards of auction houses. I have an opening bid of 200,000 from Mr. Moncada. Wait, do they typically say the name of the bidder in auctions? They use paddles here, so what's with the name calling? I should not come out to play with a big boy's wean because you're about to get a proper Scottish welcome. I'm sorry? Looks like we're being treated to a Scottish henchman cliché and an American doesn't understand a foreign accent cliché all at once. What a boy day indeed for the Sins team! 2.3, he goes with it. Mr. Moncada takes it to 3 million. Holy f did Zorro just jump the bid up from 2.3 million to 3 million in a single bid? That's like going all in on poker while also pulling out your d and putting it on the table next to your cards while on the phone with your bookie telling him to put it all on the Cleveland Browns while eating a hungry man sandwich. It's almost like he needed these dangling cigarette lamps in order to escape. <laughs> Might even call their earlier appearance Chekhov's dangling cigarette lamps. Hey, Trent. Addison wanted me to take that to the vault pronto. No level of commotion should have allowed the man that was just bidding $3 million on an item to go unnoticed as he reverses his jacket and steals the item he now no longer has to pay $3 million for. Also, the 500-year-old $3 million artifact is being escorted by nothing more than this incompetent gentleman. Where's the actual security? This is amazing. There's some crazy shit in there, huh? It's unbelievable. I mean, it totally confirms the legend. <laughs> Some guy's journal confirms a legend? A journal is how the legend gets started, you dumb f I could write a journal tomorrow about witnessing Bigfoot f***ing the Loch Ness Monster doggy style, complete with illustrations, and that would not mean that Bigfoot actually f***ed Nessie or that either creature is real. It would just be shit I wrote in a journal. As he translates this book casually, I have to wonder, does Mountain Dew still make live wire? That shit was awesome. In case you confused it with Barcelona, Arkansas. Sally doesn't have any friends. I should know I'm one of them. I guess this line is considered clever. I consider it nonsense, but you do you, movie. Why is he here? How go you one better? Why is this shot so f***ing blurry? And why is Gamora? You let her take the cross? You let her take the cross. I know we've already mentioned the pickpocketing, but this example is truly on its own plane of bullshit covered existence. Chloe barely gets within arm's reach of Drake the entire time she's here, and Sully is looking directly at her. Unless she's teamed up with Doctor Strange and given that thing its own sling ring, there's no f***ing way she's getting away with the cross. Tom Cruise isn't running in this scene. She appears to do an action movie car hood slide on her bare ass legs. Can you imagine the fucking pain? The auction house Mankata called it an altar crucifix. I didn't think about it then, but it means that the cross was originally made to stand on an altar. You didn't think about it then? You didn't think about it then? St. Mary of the Pine. This has to be it. You might just be a genius. Guessing that a crucifix might be linked to a church is not a big leap. And if you type Barcelona Pine Church into Google, this church is the first result. Am I a genius too? Can I come and play? I'm really great at being sarcastic and double crossy too. Man, imagine if they hadn't pounded that Moncada name into our brains the first 30 minutes of this movie. We'd have no idea what this meant. Holy hangover, Batman! There's supposed to be treasure hunting tomorrow, and there are nine empty bottles of wine in this shot. That's three each! Have you ever had three bottles of wine in one sitting? The answer is f no, because you wouldn't remember even if you had. Who's still thirsty? Drake walks in and ten bottles of wine? F okay, kid, you think she's okay? Who? My cat. Sully wastes everyone's time by playing the purr-down game. Alright, let's just split up and figure out where the keys go. Yes, let us, three independent treasure hunters who don't trust each other, all split up. Total logic at work, bro. One Sebastian Alcano. The 18 were here, alright. Are you fucking kidding me with this sh The 18 crew members responsible for the biggest lost treasure in history signed their names on the floor of this church, and no fucker in the last five centuries has put the pieces together that this might have something to do with said treasure. This gold should have been found immediately. But also, who lights all these candles? It was 50-50, so I made a guess. You didn't know which way the keys should be turned, you can't read the book, so instead of telling them that, you just picked one? What the fuck, Sully? You are the worst. Okay, good point. Well, give me your phone. No. Sully, just give me your phone. For what? God damn it! Even if these two had chemistry, this dialogue would be infuriating. Oh my god. You have so many apps open. What is wrong with you? Movie has time to keep making jokes about Sully being out of touch and old. I'm gonna go this way. I mean, who are these arrows ever gonna work against? Drake had no idea they were coming. Walked through the tunnel without a care in the world and they still didn't get him. Hey, Sully, do you see anything weird up there? You're gonna have to be more specific. I think it's safe to say he didn't mean anything weird like a straight performer, dickhead. Stop making Sully deliberately obtuse. And if he's this obtuse and non-funny in the video game, stop repeating mistakes. They bust open a huge metal grate in the wall at an underground rave and no one notices. I realize people are drunk and on drugs, but that's even more reason for them to be bugging the f out over the sudden wall people. What are you doing? Blending in. I'm not sure how taking off a layer of clothing and dancing for approximately five seconds before moving to the bar was supposed to help them blend in, but here we are. What are you doing? I'm causing a distraction. Distractions are great, but they work a hell of a lot better when they aren't directly next to the thing you're trying to draw attention away from. 
Okay, David Fincher's panic room, quit showing off. I had to turn the keys to the left earlier because of death darts. But here, she turns it to the right without even pausing to wonder about it. I'm like literally in a Papa John's right now. Are you? Are you literally in a Papa John's right now, you swill-slinging, money-grubbing, whoring <laughs> fuck? <clears throat> I mean, better ingredients, better shilling. Sully, we're running out of time! Found it. And the good fortune keeps on coming as Sully manages to stumble onto the keyhole needed to save the day. A keyhole that has survived 500 years of shit being built around it without being moved, knocked down, or violated in some fashion. Sully throws this couple's entire table and they just calmly get up and walk away. <laughs> God, whatever Papa John's paid for this, they got more than their money's worth. I always wanted to try this. Lighting a torch? Even if this lighter worked under regular circumstances, that thing is soaked! How is it even sparkling right now? Now he's turning to the right again. Serenity now! Look, if you don't want me scrutinizing the clockwise and counterclockwise bullshit of your f***ing ultra cross keys, then don't make an entire scene about it, okay? It's gotta be at least 2,000 years old. Who needs carbon dating when this guy can eyeball that shit? Oh my god. Well, f*** the crew of the Magellan for adding an extra step and making this a two-hour movie instead of a crisp 90 minute. Hey, Chloe. Give it to me. <laughs> but why? Why now? They're no closer to getting the gold just because they have another map. Can this double cross not wait for the other double crosses that are coming so we can get them all out of the way at once? <laughs> oh no! Now Nate's going to salt cure within 12 hours! Though he'd be even more delicious if allowed to cure all the way through a full 24-hour period. How could you not tell me this? I knew if I told you, you never would have come with me. But why? Surely after the initial anger, he would have come around and realized it wasn't Sully's fault. I <laughs> say again, wouldn't this have motivated him even more to beat Braddock to the treasure? I hired Miss Fraser the same day I hired you. Of course, she will lead the operation from here on out. F***ing unfair! You hired Braddock, who Sully knew already and heavily distrusted. And on the same day, you hired Chloe, who Sully knew already and fully trusted. You did that? Why would you waste the money on Braddock, who never stood a chance? They're in Spain, hunting for treasure incognito, and they paid for a multi-room hotel suite? Be careful when you load her. I don't want her getting scratched. F*** you, rich f***er dude! This is patently understood by the kind of folks who routinely ship fancy cars for rich folks looking to get out of Dodge. Had you not said this, they probably would have scratched this vintage automobile all to hell and back, right? The director said, how can we make this shot of Sully and Nate spying look as fake as possible? And the crew came through with flying colors. It was left to me to recover my family's gold. What's with the expositional pep talk mask of Boro? You're paying all these people to be here, right? Do you really think they give a shit why you want that five billion dollar treasure as long as they get their cut? Where's Fraser? Seriously, guys, where is she? She was right in front of you, and no one saw her slip away. I mean, Braddock's men knew this was part of the plan, so why weren't they ready for her? That was literally the worst ten hours of my life. But why are they choosing to get out now? They've sat in there for ten hours and decided to wait until the riskiest possible moment to get out. The henchies clearly send a man to the far left side of the jet, but then when the heroes choose that path, the dude is apparently gone forever. A whole bunch of bullshit. That is some very convenient flammable liquid. Can you name even one movie where it opened in the middle of a third act moment, then jump back to the beginning after doing an I bet you're wondering how I got here voiceover where the movie ended up better because of it? We know these windows aren't bulletproof because Chloe just shot through one to get into the car. So why isn't she respawning at her last checkpoint right now? I remember a luck dragon from The Never Ending Story, but I don't remember one in this movie. Look, you don't need me to go frame by frame here. Just trust me when I say that there's a terabyte hard drive full of a load of everyone survives this going on. <laughs> yep, I'm out. Fuck y'all. Enjoyed this parade of bullshit. I'm gonna get some wings. You see what I'm seeing? Holy shit. Somehow all the aircraft shenanigans happen close enough to their final destination that Chloe and Nate can just bob to shore like they haven't just been thrown out of a fucking airplane with no parachutes. No one will be seated during the scene where they try to figure shit out that is so boring even the female lead falls asleep during it. Okay, but those two cross key ends could also come together way to the south if he'd rotated them the opposite direction. Not to mention the other shorter ends could also have been the ones he was supposed to use. What the hell? Earlier Nate said, Braddock isn't gonna find the gold. Well, not where she's looking anyway. But she will somehow be close enough to f***ing hear you arrive and then follow you to the treasure. Braddock is putting in far too much effort. She should really start leaning into the sheer amount of dumb luck she seems to have. Just so everyone is clear, if there's no opening on the other side of this underwater cave, Nate dies. That won't happen because this is a movie, but this motherfucker just jumped in and started swimming like there was zero chance the treasure is a myth or maybe not located here. It's a good thing that Drake's good luck appears to be inversely proportional to how prepared he is. No diving, climbing, or caving gear, but who needs it because the ships are nicely parked above sea level and available to anyone who may happen to swim into this cave. But also, how did these two ships end up here? Did they also dive underwater and swim from the main cave to this hidden one? Or are we saying the cave grew up around the ships? 
I named these ships the SS Mold and the SS Tetanus. It's almost more than we thought. Earlier, Sully valued the treasure at around $5 billion. How the f*** has he been able to amend that estimate just by eyeballing two barrels? Braddock. And here's the biggest problem with these treasure hunting movies. If you have two teams competing for the same treasure, all one of them has to do is follow along until all the hard sh** is done and then swoop in to steal the treasure. The difference between this movie and Indiana Jones or even Dora the Explorer or even the Goonies is that those movies are a fun ride regardless. Braddock. Here, have this gold thing, in case you had no idea what a gold thing looks like. So he's a cockroach when it comes to gold. The f*** is that supposed to mean? Are cockroaches famous for collecting treasures and selling them for a profit? He probably means a cockroach when it comes to staying dead. But if I'm gonna have to start rewriting the script into something intelligible, I'm gonna start with the basic plot first. Drinking something that is just as likely to be pirate piss as it is pirate rum. After approximately 30 seconds of research, I can confirm that the ship plus cargo would have likely been an order of magnitude or more too heavy for this helicopter to carry. And even if it could, which it can't, the decayed wood would have immediately broken apart once any lifting began. Hang on a second. Okay, um, I don't like this part. I'm sure this is ticking something off either Tom Holland or Nathan Drake's bucket list, but taking the stairs really would have been just as quick and far more reliable. <laughs> I get Sully and Drake picking up whatever is around them to fight with, but why do the f***ing goons have swords instead of guns? Follow that ship! Instead of setting down your Magellan ship and then going after them, yeah, just keep lugging that heavy ass sh** that is also super valuable and give chase right now. Hey, what happened to... The ships are worth the fortune on their own. You put a hole in my boats, I put a hole in you. Why do you have to take the ship right now? Wait until the chopper runs out of fuel or has to land. It's hardly going to outrun you. Bad guy continues to shoot into tiny shield instead of the hero's legs cliche. I think I have an idea. I'm going to fire a 500-year-old cannon that's been sitting in a super moist environment for centuries. It should be rusted all the f***ing back, but you know what? It's going to work. No, movie, let her die! Why did you do that? This thing was over, but you saw Die Hard too many times and think every action film has to have one last I thought they were all dead, but they really weren't seen. Also, remember Chloe? <laughs> <laughs> he's carrying an entire boat full of treasure, but he's going to Aesop's Fable this shit, so he can actually finally have a let go of the gold moment. And why does this movie need character development? Isn't the cool thing about helicopters their ability to hover in one position? Why is Sully letting the chopper continue to pull away? Sully, no! Please! In the time it took for Sully to debate this choice, he could have just thrown the bag on board and helped Drake up, right? I don't think Drake was suggesting he throws the bag at Braddock. I mean, it's just after the title card, so are we now doing pre-credit, post-credit scenes? Just make your fucking movie, people. And a third title card, just in case you made it this far without realizing what movie you were watching. You're late. Damn it, movie! You were so close! You have a metal arm? That is awesome, dude. I don't want to go. I don't want to go, sir. Please. I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. Lost. Now gone. There's a difference. The whole world's made up. It was about finding that gold, but it's just a story. Let's say you have no idea and leave it at that, okay? We have an idea about what we do. We would not be good at what we do, would we? We would be. C Are you calling us? C we're guaranteed a record deal. Our stuff is that good. Stop touching your ear. I'm gonna eat you. I'm bigger than you. I'm higher in the food chain. Get in my belly. That's what this is about. You dragged me all the way out here. Let me believe that I might see my brother again because you think that I know something. What? No. Pray for mercy from puss. It would. 